Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is the Oscar nomination live reaction. So every year here on the channel, we get up, turn on the camera bright and early to react live to this crazy Oscar nomination ceremony. <laughs> but it's always a fun time, right? Hopefully, right? <laughs> So I'm looking at the screen here. Our little countdown says we have a little over three minutes before the ceremony, if you will, the broadcast begins. So I thought I would give my hopes, my wishes, maybe even my fears before we get into the actual production of it all. So obviously I'm rocking my Nai Nai shirt because I am begging begging the Academy to nominate Zhao Xu Zen for the Farewell for Best Supporting Actress as well as Aquafina for Best Lead Actress as well as I'm hoping that the Farewell finds a way to sneak into Best Picture, please. Also hoping for Ford v Ferrari to get into Best Picture because that one seems quite vulnerable there. I would love to see the portrait of a lady on fire sneak in, particularly for best cinematography, maybe, please. Uh, especially since it's not eligible for best international film, which is insane. <laughs> I would love to see the lighthouse get some love, particularly, you know, huge long shot, but for best supporting actor and best cinematography as well. Uh, I think these are two films that could pull a Cold War from last year and just randomly pop up in there. I'm also really nervous for that best lead actor category. I will die if Taron Egerton misses out on this nomination. He's been winning, he's been getting nominated everywhere he needs to, but I still am scared. <laughs> And I'm also nervous Christian Bale. I think he's a little bit vulnerable as well. So I, I hope that they make the final cut. But I guess we'll see. As for director, obviously I want at least a woman to w get in. Uh, to sneak in there somewhere. And Greta Gerwig seems to be the only one that anybody ever talks about. So I'm hoping for Greta Gerwig <laughs> to get in. I do think she deserves it. I think Little Women is a beautifully directed film. Um, so I, I hope to hear her name called there as well. And then, of course, my biggest hope and prayer. My number one wish list item is Lupita Nyong'o from Us to sneak in and get that best lead actress nomination that she so deserves. Stop the horror bias academy. There are so many amazing female performances particularly in the horror genre that year after year just get ignored and I hope, I hope she got the SAG nomination which it was the last like little bit of uplifting for me but uh, I don't know. It's looking more and more dire as we get close so I'm not expecting Lupita, but I would be so pumped. I'd also like to see S get in for Best Original Score. So, And then finally, do not leave out How to Train Your Dragon 3. Please, Jesus, I will die if they announce those animation category and there's no How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> BAFTAs, I'm looking at you. Basically, Academy, just stay far away from those BAFTA nominations, please. All right. Here we go. Issa Rae and John Cho, I believe, doing this? Yes. Live from the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles, please welcome the president of the Academy, David Rubin. Good morning, and welcome to the brand new David Geffen Theater at the Academy Museum. We can't wait until the museum officially opens later this year, when the world can experience, in person, a sweeping adventure into the greatest movies and movie makers of all time. Mm -hmm. We're here this morning to announce nominations for the 92nd Oscars. All the nominees are voted on by members of the Academy, an international community of artists. What makes this Oscar so special is that these nominations are given to artists by their peers. Actors nominate actors, editors nominate editors, directors nominate directors. You get the idea. And now, I'm pleased to introduce this morning's hosts, Issa Rae and John Cho. 
Good morning, John. And I prepared a big opening, like a monologue. It was really good. It was, it was so funny. good. Yeah. A lot of good jokes. But we decided that all people really want to hear is who is nominated. So let's get started. Members of the Academy's oh. Actors Branch nominate these performances. Justice for Nine Nine. An actress in a supporting role. Kathy Bates in Richard Jewell. Good. Laura Dern in Marriage Story. Your winner. Scarlett Johansson in Jojo Rabbit. Florence Pugh in Little Women. And Margot Robbie in Bombshell. Right. Strong list. On to achievement in costume design. The members of the Academy's costume designers no, thank branch God's nominate not, but not even this. the Irishman. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit. Joker. Little Women. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We need to nominate the audience at home for waking up. Yeah. Now Rocket Man for costume yeah, design. Uh, <laughs> the sound branch oversees two categories for achievement in sound mixing. The branch nominates Ad Astra. Yay, Ad Astra. Ford versus Ferrari. Thank God. Joker. 1917. Obviously. This is going to be terrible. And once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Time for a jump in. You feel okay? <laughs> okay. These are the nominees for Achievement in Sound Editing. <sighs> Ford versus Ferrari. Thank God. Joker. 1917. Thank God. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And... Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Sir, because I don't know why the sci-fi movies and superhero movies who have to create completely new sounds are disrespected in the sounds categories. Here are the nominees for original score voted by the music branch. Joker. Little Women. Marriage Story. 1917. Thank God. And Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. We're doing good. I'm okay. I mean, us should have been nominated. The animation branch oversees the short film categories for best animated short film. Yes, here Mountain Dew. Hair love, maybe. Shara, daughter. Hair love. Yes, thank God. Oh. Memorable. And sister. Do you have a sister? I do not. Hmm. Which of these two of those? I, mean, I like them both a lot. <laughs> For best live action short film, The Branch nominates Brotherhood. I don't know. Nefta Football Club. I don't think I'm going to know any of these. The Neighbor's Window. Saria and a sister. I don't have a sister, okay. by the way. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> now for another acting category. The nominees for performance by an actor in a supporting role are Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Ooh. Anthony Hopkins in The Two Poets. Oh, got in, huh? Al Pacino in The Irishman. Joe Pesci in The Irishman. And Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Wow. A bunch of no-names right there. <laughs> uh, we still have more nominee announcements. We'll be back at exactly 5.30. <sighs> oh, my God. So we got six minutes to discuss this hot-ass mess. I am flabbergasted and so upset at that Best Supporting Actress nomination list. I guess I didn't even fathom that they would snub Jennifer Lopez, yet here we are.
They snubbed Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> uh, they also obviously snubbed Zhao Shuzen from The Farewell. I'm already pretty much need to just prepare myself for that getting nothing. Like, zero love. Um... Because uh, I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do. This is where is the farewell love? Where? Because um, I can't imagine that Aquafina, uh, who also has been missing out at like SAG and BAFTA, is gonna sneak her way in. Uh, so would they dare give it a screenplay nod? I doubt it, and I think it's pretty much dead on the water for getting in at best picture level. I'm just like flabbergasted right now. Still, y'all. <laughs> The costume design category is so boring. No Rocket Man, no Dolomite, no any of these wonderful costumes. No Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, even, which had wonderful costuming. I mean, yes, it's nice to make a, a suit look good or get the period piece right, but I don't know. Uh, I always enjoy costumes. I feel like I can't just walk into the store and pick up off the rack. So. That's just me personally. I would have liked at least one of those to be flashy. Um, I'm happy to see Star Wars get in on the board and get some love, as I said. I don't know why comic book films and sci-fi films aren't always contenders in the sound categories because most of them have to imagine, create, and completely, from the bottom up, design what creatures are going to sound like, what ships are going to sound like, what this planet's going to sound like, what this power is going to sound like, from their imagination. War films always get in here, and this is obviously no disrespect to 1917, because, hello, I love it, and I would have died if it missed the nominations. But... War films, we have plenty of, you know, pre-existing stuff for bullets, for planes, for bombs, and we don't when it comes to, you know, science fiction. And so, I don't know why that always gets disrespected. Um, original score, you know, this is John Williams' final go-round with Star Wars, and I do think the score is very good. So, if anything had to bump out us, I guess I'm happy it was Star Wars, but would have really liked to, to see us get a nomination here. And, at this point, through two categories of acting, we're on the Oscar So White train. Uh, they, they really, they did it. Uh, <laughs> I thought... Jennifer Lopez was going to be pretty secure. I wasn't actually all that scared because, you know, she missed the BAFTAs, but she had gotten the SAG Award, the Golden Globe. You know, she'd been nominated and winning across. So I wasn't really all that nervous for her. Yet, here we are. So no women of color in supporting. I'm pretty scared they're going to go no women of color in lead. Uh, maybe Cynthia Erivo gets in there for Harriet. We'll see. I, I really don't think she's the best of the, of the lot that they should be putting in. But <laughs> at this point, I'll take any win I can get. So Cynthia, Lupita, Aquafina, somebody, please, Jesus, break up the Monopoly and get into the lead actress. Because... Eddie Murphy ain't getting in at lead actor. I mean, I'll be stunned. And there's no other actor. Of, or I mean, I, well, Antonio Banderas, I guess, as well, could. But I just, I don't see it. So, our chances are dwindling, y'all. This maybe gives me... No, it actually gives me no faith. <laughs> I have no faith. Um, I have Ford v. Ferrari. I'm really hoping continues the technical love and gets in for editing. Uh, 1917, y'all, do y'all think it's really like a one take, or what, what are these complaints about 1917 getting an editing award at like the Critics' Choice? I don't know, but 1917 should get an editing nomination, um, and I suspect we're about to get a Joker, the Irishman, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood love fest coming our way. So, with this Oscar so white starting to appear early on, I hope that doesn't continue, and I really hope something like Parasite is able to break in somewhere. Best picture, please, Jesus, do not snub it there. But I guess we shall see. Oh, it's 5, 5 30 and 30 seconds, so we'll see. Here, I'll turn this foolery back on and 
Let's see what's going on. Oh my god. And yes, I have replaced the coffee with Mountain Dew for this early in the morning. Ain't nobody got time to get up and brew some coffee right now. But we got the do to do what it do to get angry uh, this morning. <laughs> so my screen went black. Let's see what kind of foolishness they are about to unleash. <sighs> I hate this crap. Like, honestly, I don't even... Why do they need to take a break? Like, announce for 10 minutes and take a break. Not even 10 minutes, like 8 minutes. What's the break for? <laughs> to build suspense? Stop it. For those watching, welcome back. You already know that. <laughs> the Academy's documentary branch oversees two categories. First, the nominees for Best Documentary Feature. American Factory. <laughs> the Cave. <laughs> the Edge of Democracy. <laughs> for Sama. And Honeyland. The two that I know people are championing out. No Apollo 11, which really Academy. No Maiden. This year, wow. In the absence. Learning to skateboard in a war zone if you're a girl. Life overtakes me. I don't know any of these. So. St. Louis Superman. And walk, run, cha-cha. This is the best collection of titles. But yeah, it's be a very angry <laughs> reaction. The newly renamed Best International Feature <sighs> Film Award is voted on by Academy members across all branches from around the world. And the nominees are Corpus Christi, Poland. Thanks a lot, France, for not nominating the portrait. Honeyland. North Macedonia. Zarab, France. Pain and Glory, Spain. God. And Parasite, South Korea. Yeah. That would have been a major shock, and I might have flipped the table. Production design branch nominates. Please, 1917. Please, Parasite. The Irishman. Joe Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Parasite. Yes, thank God. I, I used to do production design. No way. I did it, yeah. <laughs> you lied to me. God. Uh, here are the nominees for achievement in film editing, voted by the Academy's Film Editors Branch. Ford versus Ferrari. Thank God. The Irishman. Jojo Rabbit. Alright. Joker. And Parasite. I mean, yay for Parasite, but really, no 1917. For achievement in cinematography, the cinematographers branch nominates the following films. The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse. Yes. Nineteen Seventeen. All right, thank God. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, no portrait. I'm happy Lighthouse. Time to way to sneak we're in. Great, I do. We're killing it. Are we? Nominate us. All right, yeah. <laughs> yes, nominate them so we can get some color. The Academy's visual effects branch nominates the following films for achievement in visual effects. If I effects. see cats on here. Avengers, Endgame. The Irishman. The Lion King. 1917. Yes! And Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. For achievement in that? makeup and That's hairstyling, good. the members of this branch nominate the following films. Bombshell. Bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> Duh, please. Joker. Judy. 
Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Should have gotten the costume design too. 1917. Oh, they expanded this. Didn't they used to only do three? I'm glad they expanded it. Best animated feature film is voted on by the <sighs> short films. And feature animation branch as well as members of the animation community across all branches. Here are the nominees. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Praise Jesus, thank God. I lost my body. Oh, it got in. I'm not mad at it. Klaus. Klaus got in? Missing Link. And Toy Story 4. They didn't nominate Frozen 2? <laughs> For achievement in original song... Ooh, the these people are, are hating Disney between the Golden Globes and this. I can't let you throw yourself away from Toy Story 4. I knew it. Randy Newman always gets nominated. I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. Gosh, all these eyes. Into the Unknown from Frozen 2. Stand up from Harriet. Um, kind of sad that overseas speechless didn't get nominated First, from Aladdin. But. Here are the nominees for writing, adapted screenplay. Huh? The Irishman, Stephen Zaley. Yeah. Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi. Glad to see it. Overall, Joker, obviously. Todd Phillips and Scott Silver. Little Women, Greta Gerwig. And the two popes, mm. Anthony McCartney. Really sad, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood didn't get that nomination. I thought it had a great screenplay, but and for writing, that's just me. Original screenplay, the members of the branch nominate. Knives Out, Ryan Yay! Johnson. Yay! I was a little bit nervous that might get left out. Marriage Story, Noah Baumbach. 1917, Sam Mendes and Christy Wilson-Karen. Oh, got the screenplay nomination. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino. Probably gonna win. And Parasite. Yes, Parasite, thank God. For performance by an actor in a leading role, the Actors Branch nominates... Antonio Banderas. Is Whoa, he did! He got in! We have somebody of color in acting! Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Ooh. Adam Driver in Marriage oh. Story. Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. And Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. For performance by an actress in a leading role, the actor's branch Karen nominates. got the snap. <sighs> Cynthia Erivo in Harriet. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. Saoirse Ronan in Little Women. Now Lupita. Charlize Theron in Bombshell. And Renee Zellweger in Judy. Thank God Cynthia found her way in. Achievement in directing the director's branch. Zero chance. The Academy nominates The Irishman, Martin Scorsese. Joker, Todd Phillips. 1917, Sam Mendes. <laughs> Once upon a time in Hollywood. Well, we have no women Tarantino. yet again. Bong Joon-ho. At least we got a person of color with Parasite. Congratulations to those men. <sighs> yes! Really, you better say congratulations to those men, Beesh. Yes! Ford vs. Ferrari. Yay! I'm, I'm just very happy I got into Best Picture. Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Jane Rosenthal, and Emma Tillinger Koskoff. Producer. 
Jojo Rabbit, Carthew Neal, and Taika Waititi, producers. Joker, Todd Phillips, Bradley Cooper, and Emma tillinger Koskoff, producers. Little Women, Amy Pascal, producer. Marriage Story, Noah Baumbach and David Heyman, producers. 1917, Sam Mendes, Pippa Harris, Jane Ann Tengren, and Callum McDougall, producers. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, David Heyman, Shannon McIntosh, and Quentin Tarantino, producers. And Parasite. Thank God and that thing gets snubbed here. All right. Yes, okay. 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 Congratulations. It actually went to, to nine this year. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and watch to see who wins the gold at the 92nd Oscars Sunday, February. I'm over it. I'm sorry, Isa. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm over it. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Okay, so. Taryn Edgerton getting the the snub is outrageous to me. I can't believe it. I'm so annoyed. I knew he was a vulnerable one on the cusp there, as as was Christian Bale. And both of them just got shoved right the hell on out. <laughs> Which makes me really upset. Christian Bale, to a certain extent, Taryn Edgerton really makes me upset. And here we are. He... Christian, this is how you know, like, the, the Golden Globes gave awards to both Taron Edgerton and Aquafina, and then they just get no love. Taron Edgerton has gotten nominated everywhere, literally everywhere. So for him to miss out today is just, ugh, so frustrating. <laughs> the Farewell, I'm rocking my Call Your Nine Nine shirt. The Farewell got shut out. It got nothing, no nominations anywhere. And I hate the Academy for it. Um, best lead actress. Uh, I mean, I knew Lupita was fighting an uphill battle. I know they hate and think down upon horror films. But what the hell? Like, really? Like I said, yay for Cynthia Revo, but, I mean, Harriet... And this is the problem, actually, with the... the people want to know why we get angry at this. It's because female cinema is constantly looked down upon. Clearly, when they direct a film, it just is not seen as equal because there were a ton, ton of amazing female-directed films this year. And even in a year this amazing, we couldn't break through and get one female director through to the nominee list, what the hell? But two, when you look at the best actress category, so often those awards, those films that are nominated are never the best picture nominees. They're just movies that get kind of tossed in there. So movies with even lead actresses aren't respected as much. We have Harriet, we have Bombshell, we have Judy, Come on, those are getting nominations nowhere. Nowhere else on this list are we seeing those films, yet there the actresses are. So it just it's all an underlying problem. You look at this across the board with how they're viewed. Parasite is another one, honestly. Yes, it got the big nominees it needed as a film, but none of the actors were seen as worthy to get into any of these categories because... There is still inherent bias, and I know people are going to get mad, they're going to rant, and they're going to rave, like I'm ranting and raving right now, telling us to shut up about women, to shut up about people of color, but it's just a systematic system in place, and it just continues to frustrate me. These nominees this morning... They just frustrated me across the board. I can't believe The Farewell got completely shut out. Rocket Man got almost completely shut out. It got the best song because everyone loves Outland. But other than that, there's nothing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. This Oscar season, it's frustrating and it's a bit boring. I, I realized I loved 1917 and I loved Ford v. Ferrari. So this might sound a little bit hypocritical, but this just feels like the same old, same old, revert back to the good old days 
of the Oscars with, you know, the Irishman, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, really dominating in nominations. Joker is different, uh, at least, so there's that. Yeah, as much as people get angry, it at least is a genre film breaking through. But I uh, just, I don't know, y'all. Yeah. This, this nominations list was highly, highly disappointing to me. So... I don't know. My enthusiasm is just not here for award season. Uh, I, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'll be ranking the Best Picture nominees probably here soon because I've already seen all nine of them. Um, we'll be going over the Oscar coverage a little bit more. Probably talk about critic scores and box office as well like I did last year. And then of course... I'll get out my predictions, and then, you know, the night of the awards, I'll have my recap and review. So, I'm creating an entire awards playlist here on the channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so you can check all of that out and get the notifications. If you like this reaction, hit that like button down below and comment. Are you just as disappointed in these nominations as I am? Did your favorite film make the cut? Let me know your reactions to these Oscar noms in the comment section down below, or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!